malware, malware, malware. What is malware? For us to be able to identify what malware problem is, we have to first identify what is malware. Malware is legitimate code doing illegitimate things. Yes, it's a legitimate code doing illegitimate things. Okay, what is malware problem? Well, malware problem is you running that legitimate code doing illegitimate things with unfettered, unlimited access on your computer, on your network. So what that means is, if you solve the problem of you running it with unfettered access, unlimited access to your network, you will solve the malware problem. Okay, so what is oxygen to malware? What does malware need for it to survive? How does ransomware infect your computer? Let's talk about that. Malware needs three things in the main. It needs a right privilege to your hard drive. It needs a right privilege to your registry. It needs a right privilege to your COM interface. These are the main areas where malware needs for it to survive, for it to infect, for it to cause damage. Here is how we solve that problem. We virtualize the hard drive. We virtualize the COM interface. We virtualize the registry. Imagine you are ransomware. You come into a computer. What do you want to do? You want to read the hard drive. We say, sure, no problem. You have read privileges. Go ahead and read the hard drive. And you say, don't forget you're a ransomware. And you say, oh, now I want to encrypt whatever I read from your hard drive. We say, sure, no problem. Go ahead and encrypt it in RAM. Still no damage. And then you say, haha, now I want to overwrite your existing files with what I've just encrypted so that I can demand some bitcoins from you. We say, hang on a minute. Here is a virtual hard drive just as I've created for you. You don't touch because it requires a write privilege. You have no write privileges to write to hard disk, but you can write to this virtual drive. As far as ransomware is concerned, you don't know any different. But you are overwriting. Without you even knowing, you're overwriting to a virtual hard drive. This is why there is no infection. We solve the malware problem through the virtualization. So, when a new executable file comes in, we check. Are you a good file? Are you a bad file? Or are you unknown? If you're a good file, we say, come on in. We don't need to virtualize. If you're a bad file, again, we just kill you, there and then. If you're unknown, you get to run in our little container called containment technology. And that's how we stop malware. But I hear you saying, how about fileless malware? How about all those you know, PowerShell stuff, all the scripts that could cause problems? We call them fileless malware. Well, that's another area where we have created an amazing solution to. What is fileless mal malware? Is a script doing bad stuff. So what we do, we intercept anything that could write a script interpreter, anything that could write a script. Then we take the script, we take its parameters, we turn its parameters into a file. And then we put that inside our containment. So we turn fileless malware, actually part of it into a file, and run it inside containment. This is why not even fileless malware can cause infection. How many unknown files are there? Well, enterprise and consumers are two different areas. In enterprise, you're not going to have more than 0.3 unknown executables per user per week. So the number of unknown files are limited. But the real problem, the real damage will come from the unknown files because that's how every single file, every single malware starts its life as an unknown executable. 
And these are non-executables will get to run inside our virtual containers.